Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name's Drew. I work on StormKit at Docker. Um, I need to embiggen this. I'm going to show you a couple of new things we've been working on. Um, so these are two demos. Uh, the first one is um, definitely broken uh, because I decided I was going to demo it this morning and I couldn't get it to work. And now I can't, oh, there it is. So, um, so when we built SwarmKit, uh, a lot of the higher level orchestration layer stuff is really generic. Um, because the idea is that you could plug in like any like executable unit to run as a task and it would work. Uh, and then so of course container D is a big deal. So um, there's been some work by a guy named Ian uh, to make container D work on SwarmKit or SwarmKit to work with container Ds. So the first thing I've got to do is, uh, I had a container running and then it closed. But the first thing I'm going to do is just go add um, container D to my path. Container D, container D. Can you all see that? Uh, bin path. And then we're just going to run it and detach. So look, container D runs. Uh, and this is also partially broken because this is Docker for Mac. Container D in Docker, and there, I think there's some caveats there that I don't fully understand. Like I said, I started on this this morning. Um, so then let me make sure my old SwarmKit state directory is gone. Um, and then uh, we run Swarm D, and we set Container D address, and we set it to the Container D socket. And then we set... Uh, state directory to stormkit state, we detach. And uh, you can see uh, that first info line, 000, it says uh, we're using container D. That's really cool. And so of course we can like go swarm CTL uh, and we can create a name, Redis, and an image Docker.io, library, Redis, latest, and, um, oh. oh, create. And, swarm CTL, service create, yeah, Mondays, y'all. Uh, and then SwarmKit is going to spew a bunch of errors because I don't have it set up correctly. But if this demo did work, you'd have a service running in Container D. <laughs> so yeah, we're just going to exit that. So the other cool thing that I'm going to show off, um, which is uh, two things that I didn't show at DockerCon when I gave a talk on Swarm2 features, uh, which are configs and the event stream for Swarm events. Uh, so on Friday, I worked on this uh, thing I call like a proxy manager. Um, and basically what a config is, is config is like some arbitrary data, some binary data you can put into a, some, somewhat like a Swarm secret. You put it into Swarm, it goes into the raft log. And then unlike a secret, you can mount a config in like basically wherever you want in a container automatically. Um, so like, uh, this is really cool, for example, if you're running like Nginx, uh, you can take your default Nginx image, like, you know, just Docker run or a Docker service create Nginx, um, and you can mount a config. So like, you know, config dash dash config add, uh, and you add like a config, and it, you say you should want to point it at like um, Nginx's config is etsy Nginx, Nginx.conf, and then it'll like overwrite whatever's in the container at that location with whatever you put in your configuration file. Um, and so I wrote this like proxy, I call it the proxy manager. Um, and so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a network called the proxy net. Uh, and then we're going to create a global service that's just like, this is literally just a default Nginx image. And we're publishing port 80. And we're going to connect it to that network we just created. Um, and then of course we now have like synchronous service create so you can like watch your service come up. Um, and now if we, you know, Docker service LS. We've got a, a proxy, and then if we go and we hit, you know, localhost, it's going to say it works, or Engine, welcome to Nginx. Um, so now I'm going to start this proxy manager. 
And so this is going to do one. This is going to do something really cool, which is connect to the Docker like event stream, and it's going to listen for swarm events. Uh, and you get uh, create, update, and destroy. I don't handle update, but I do create and remove. Um, so now let's create a new service, and we'll call it a. Uh, um, let's see. I have some things. We're going to warm. Okay, so I put some uh, things into my. Um, uh, Etsy hosts, these are just like some arbitrary host names. Warble Mops is one. So we're going to jump back over here. Oh, was I? I can't ever remember. Okay, here we go. Uh, so we're going to call this Warble Mops. Uh, and we're going connect to connect it to the network, proxy net. Uh, and we're going to do uh, HTTPD. Uh, so Apache. Create. Mondays. And so you can see that like we've generated a config file, and if we do uh, docker config ls, like we've created this uh, configuration file. Oop, it already exists. I must have done, I must have had some stuff left over from when I was pre-doing this demo. Um, but there's a configuration file, and it should be mounted into the, oh, I have to remove that and try again, Mondays. Now let's create it. And then it's going to successfully create everything. And then we've got this config that we just created. And we do Docker service ls. And we, we're bringing up the uh, Nginx service. And so now the Nginx service is restarted. We kicked off a service update on that. And if we go back and we go to localhost, we still get Nginx. And if we go to Warble Mops, we get Apache. It works. Um, and so what this is doing is it's creating this new configuration file, and it's dumping like an Nginx like reverse proxy um, was it the um, server block, uh, and then it's dropping that configuration file into uh, etsy nginx conf.d some name .conf. And so when Nginx restarts, it looks at all the .conf files in that directory and like adds them to its configuration, like it includes them. And so we just add new con add new configs to that directory, restart the Nginx service. Uh, including those new configs, and we can add like whatever site. So I can go over here and I can add um, Docker service create name. Uh, what was the other weird name I had here? Uh, as of Womp. There we go. And then we're going to do. Um, of course, net, uh, network, proxy net. And uh, we're going to use uh, this thing, docker sample nginx, uh, which like returns the name of the container it's running on. Um, you can see that we're going to get uh, create a new thing, and proxy pass and whatever, and it's going to restart that nginx service. And then when we go to Warble Mops, we get it works. And we go when we go to as of womp, we get also it works. Oh, there it is. Uh, so now you get the container ID. So like that's another service we just added, and it added that configuration file. And uh, so this is really cool because all this works with like a default nginx image. Like there's no special image here. It's just a default nginx image, and then we just update it with new config files. So that's my demo. Thanks everyone. So now I'm going to hand it over to Sentosh, who's going to talk about LibNetwork.